welcome to the Dojo Talk Podcast. Please remove them shoes before entry. The master is here, and you still have not taken off your shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Living every day to define man's mission yeah. Looking to the sky for divine transmission yeah. Deaf man's vision makes the blind man listen yeah. Eyes on the prize, this is blind ambition Thank you. Yo, 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 yo What's going on, people? Thank you for joining me for another week uh, Another episode of the podcast I was going to put this out on Monday But I figured, you know what? It's Sunday You're probably not doing much I know I'm not doing much so I just got around to editing this episode and figured I'd just put it out today. Um, but real quick, I just wanted to do a quick intro. Um, after this episode, I might take a brief break, at least for this week. My birthday is coming up on Saturday. So I took off of work Saturday, off Sunday. So I'm going to, you know, chill out, relax this week. And then um, I'll definitely be back next week, probably for some more episodes. I'm pretty sure... There's some fights coming up. Um, I'm pretty sure the Alexander Gustafson and Glover Teixeira fight is actually, yeah, that's the day after my birthday. So, um, you know, I'll be back next week. Uh, I mean, Antaku will definitely review that and might even talk about some of the fights that happened yesterday. I know Invicta had a card yesterday. Um, Glory had a card yesterday. And from what I've seen, there was some, there was some pretty good cards. Um, I think it was even a few boxing fights yesterday, so it's, it'll, it'll be a, enough material to, to talk about next week, as well as some, some other albums that hopefully I'll get to listen to by next week, and then I can have those geared up and ready. Um, so just wanted to give that quick heads up. Um, as for this episode, um, we got another guest came through the dojo and chilled with me. Um, my man Hamid came through, a.k.a. Pale Moon. Um, I've known this man since, what, 11th? 11th grade i think so yeah we 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 go pretty <laughs> pretty way back um from from days of you know recording in the studio i don't think i've ever mentioned that on this podcast but in, in my past life i was uh an engineer of sorts working behind the boards um don't really do it much anymore <laughs> the most editing i do now was actually for this podcast but you know we we we, we go pretty way back as far as is you know he he was around when I first really started like getting really heavy into into music in general. You know, he was actually probably one of the one of the first friends I made when I moved up to where I'm at now. So uh, me and him had a chance to chop it up for about an hour. Actually, you know what? I'm not gonna lie, we went <laughs> we we went pretty well over an hour. But um, yeah, we uh we chopped it up about Logic's album, Everybody. Um, we also got into kind of a, a good mainstream that ah, mainstream uh discussion of of mainstream rap music dudes like drake kendrick uh, i think we even threw in wale lupe we we kind of went all over the place and then we, we kind of wrapped it up at the end talking about uh wonder woman and kind of the future of dc in general and how wonder woman could maybe make or break <laughs> At DC's plans for the next few years but yeah man it was a really dope episode I'm glad he came through definitely we'll probably have him back on the show um I will leave a few links in the description below so you guys can check out his music um on SoundCloud and if I can find that old album that he has on Bandcamp <laughs> which I'm, I'm pretty sure I can find it I'm gonna leave a link to that too I might even leave a link to the video that we recorded um that one music video that I was in for like 0.2 seconds um <laughs> I'm gonna try to find it. I'm gonna try to find it. Um, I'm gonna leave a link to that too. But yeah, man, uh, this was a dope episode, and I hope you guys enjoy. Peace. <laughs> I almost just want to start it with that chirp. Is that you? Yeah, yeah. There's probably some birds in the background. <laughs> yeah. so, so that's, that's, <laughs> that's the intro of the podcast. I don't even care. <laughs> yeah, peaceful. We started things off. With that. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the Dojo Talk Podcast. This is episode number 26. We got birds chirping. Um, it's about, I don't know, 85, or it was like 85, 90 degrees earlier. So, um, yeah, we're, we're going to 
we just gonna roll and I'm, I'm gonna try to keep up the energy with my voice I might fade away but I went on a three mile hike so I have an excuse so at least for the next 45 minutes I'm gonna try to sound energetic before I fall over and die but um yeah today I got a guest with me for the the second time so I'm making history again getting getting other people in the in the house I got a podcast roommate we had another guest a couple weeks ago now we got another guest um, I will let you introduce yourself and let them know who you are and what you do. Uh, what's up, everybody? I'm Hamid, a.k.a. Pale Moon. That's what I'm going by these days. Uh, yeah, and I'm here to talk about some albums and maybe some other stuff in the mix. Yeah, we're, we're probably going to... Um, it's going to be a lot of BS in this episode. I mean, we, we're going to try to stay focused, <laughs> but we I'm not going <laughs> to... Just like old times. Yeah, just like old times. We're, we're not going to make any promises... Um, I guess for listeners who don't know, uh, we go way back uh, to actual like recording in studios, and instead of recording songs, just watching World Star videos. So, <laughs> Take it way back. right. <laughs> <laughs> so we we gonna try to get through this smoothly, but uh, we we might have some slip ups, but it's all good. So yeah, man, we're gonna have fun. We're gonna yeah. have fun. Yeah, it's it's this album gonna give us a lot to talk about. So my um, shoes are off, and I'm in the dojo, ready to. Ready to kick it. Let's, let's, let's get it. We're going to jump right into it. So this album today we're going to talk about is Everybody by Logic. Um, I guess I, I'm going to start off on a positive note. Um, I'll okay. give give him some props. I didn't see the numbers that he did, but he hit number one, I think. I'm pretty sure he yeah. hit number one. So Yeah, I mean, I think like he's kind of like... He's one of those cats that's been building up hype over the years. I mean, he's been around for a while now, but I mean, I just feel like every release he has is bigger and bigger. And obviously, he's got a pretty, uh, a pretty, I guess, big fan base. That I mean, I'm not really engulfed in the Logic world, but I guess he has a pretty big fan base that we just don't hear a lot about. Or yeah, they're they're there because he's even under pressure did. I don't think it did this big numbers, but yeah, he he does numbers every time somehow. In an age where a lot of people are, I ain't gonna say flopping, but you know, doing a hundred thousand nowadays is almost like going platinum. So right, I think like the average in some some cases is like between like ten and thirty, right? Yeah, like, like 10, Joey 10, yeah. Joey only did like twenty something, I think, his first week. Really? Yeah, which is wild. As good as that album was, he only did twenty. Right. Um, but. All right, man. This 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 album. Um, I guess before we get into specifics, uh, what what are your overall o- overall thoughts? Well, and this is gonna sound bad, but it wasn't trash. Like, you know, um, I think I enjoyed it for the most part in terms of just listening to what he had to say this time around. Um, in terms of just like the musicality and the songs behind it um that's a little bit more shaky i think like we kind of said a little bit beforehand that like there's a lot of talking going on this album which isn't always a bad thing but um you know i'm in it for the music i just want to hear some songs and stuff like that i felt like that that's kind of like where my gripe lies in is just the the length of these songs and and what they end up turning into as the tracks pan out yeah, I was, I was conflicted on this, and it's weird because the first time I listened to it, I felt like I liked it, mm-hmm. and then the more I listened to it, I was like, I don't know, I'm starting to pick up on stuff about this I just don't like, and then after a while, it, it got to the point where I couldn't, I can't listen to some of these songs all the way through, maybe a couple of them I can get, like, I can get through America all the way through, like, I thought America was dope. Mm-hmm. Um, I can listen to the Suicide Hotline. I'm not gonna do that telephone home, the whole number, but y'all know the track I'm talking about. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I can right. I can get through that all the way through, and a lot, there are a couple of other ones. But then, really, the the first track, the opening track, Hallelujah, to me, this that one track tells me everything I like and don't like about this whole album, all in one song. Like, yeah, it, kinda, <laughs> it, it embodies everything about the album because you get, you know, the mu- musicality and you know beat switching up and stuff like that and but then you look at the time and it's like a seven and a half minute song and then you realize that like you said that kind of mirrors what the rest of the album is like and you it's... get you get these tracks where it's like 
you get about a minute to two minutes worth of like with promising stuff and you're like all right let's let's see where this is going and then it just cuts like that to um just him ranting and raving about his life or whatever. yeah a, a dissertation <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> almost and like Hallelujah started off dope. We get a nice little piano and I'm like, all right, he's old, he's he's hitting high notes and his, his singing voice actually isn't that bad. It's not it's better than some other people I can say. <laughs> yeah. He he might overdo it a little bit, but like it's 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 it's, it's he can carry a note long enough that it's not like overbearing. Right. And right. yeah, like it, that track started off good and then I remember listening to it for the first time and I was like, all right, this is clearly an intro track. And then I got about three minutes in. I was like, okay, why is this song still, still going? Why is this still going? And then at one point, the beat like switched up, and I was like, no, why are you dragging? Don't, <laughs> like, right? Don't it, drag it, 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 man. Like I hear that confliction because, like, in a way, everything sets up for everybody to drop, right? So it's like you get the whole song, and then it cuts into like that skit. And then when Neil deGrasse Tyson's like, I am God, then it cuts into everybody. And then it feels like the album is finally begun. And like you said, but it took about, you know, eight minutes to get to the album beginning. It just feels like an extra long intro. Yeah, for no for no reason. But I'll say it kicked off into everybody. Everybody I, I pretty much enjoyed. Yeah. That was that's one of the few tracks on here that I can jam all the way through and not really get the urge to skip it. Um, but, but that kind of comes back to the whole again. It's just like that's a two minute and forty second song, right? There. Right. <laughs> and you think about it, and then you get into confess, which I thought was pretty. It was okay. It was getting. It was going places, and then you cut into like Killer Mike's sermon. And then it just kept, kind of goes back in the same thing where it's like you had a song for about a minute and a half, two minutes, and then it just, I don't know, it falls off. And I feel it. I mean, what did you think? What did, what did you think about Killer Mike's uh, verse? Or I sermon? was, um, I'll just go, the song in general, I like the production. And actually, I'll say that about this entire album. I think musically, this is probably one of his better projects. Uh -huh. But I felt like some of... I ain't gonna say the beats were wasted. That might be a little too harsh. But, like, they weren't... Confess should have been... You can't have Killer Mike on a song and not give him a verse. Like, don't... <laughs> like, when when he got to the sermon... I mean, I, I was listening for about the first five, ten seconds. And I was like, bro, you gotta... I need bars. Like... Yeah, and, do you feel like... Did you feel, like, conflicted about the fact that, like... A lot of the a lot of these tracks, you know, like when they when they kick into their talking or skits or whatever, like they're pretty good in a certain sense. Like what Killer Mike's saying, like it's all good stuff and it's stuff that like any other day I'd be saying there needs to be more of that like in music or more of that in hip hop. But like the minute I got it, I was like, eh, I don't know. Like, did you feel <laughs> conflicted about that? Uh, like I I, I got what he was was saying even though i do kind of feel like it's kind of weird because i feel like a lot of this album was you know positivity we all need to get along and aside from the racial aspect but then confess does kind of stick out because if you really listen to it, it's like the complete opposite he's not talking about getting along he's basically berating himself <laughs> for like the yeah. entire song almost so like i'm I, I guess I get it. You got to show duality. You know, nobody's positive 24-7. So I, I guess I get it. But in the end, in that way, it kind of it kind of sticks out. But I wish I don't mind Killer Mike's talking. I wish maybe maybe they should have did like a split to where let him rap like the first half, even if you got to cut his verse short and then he goes into talking. Just right, right. Do, do something like that, because not having killer mike especially i mean anybody who's been keeping up with killer mike lately he's been killing it with run the jewels so right, you look so at it yeah get a man some bars more. yeah and then I don't, I don't know should we go track by by track um actually you know what i'll jump to another theme that played out through a lot through this album uh do you feel like the 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 biracial aspect maybe got 
I'm trying to think of the word. Maybe got beat to death a little bit. Like, was it too much? Yeah, well, I mean, and, you know, like, I like I want to tread those waters carefully here, but, like, it's, like, I think it's, like, a pretty interesting story that he has where, like, you know, he has, like, the whole, like, white mom that was racist and the dad that never showed up and, like, right. he's kind of, like, playing that whole duality card the entire time. And I think that's pretty interesting, but, like, uh, and we talked about this a little bit earlier, like, with Take It Back, it's just, like, all right, man, that's a long, long, long story <laughs> you're telling there. I mean, Take It Back is like another seven-minute track where, and I timed this, like, when I listened to it when it first came out, I think you get about a minute and a half worth of, like, him rapping. And and I think you brought up the point where it was, like, everything he was saying in his verse, he then repeated in his rant right. or, or, or story. And it's like, oh, my God, dude, like, they're killing my vibe here. Especially because I thought Take It Back, the flow is like, it was pretty cool. And like, you know, Logic does his little like stutter stuff and glitches and all that. And like, I thought it was cool and enjoyable. I mean, what did you think? Did you think it got beat to death? Uh, I can't say it got beat to death. I think I just, like his, yeah, like you said, his story is interesting. Like, you don't, I don't hear other people talk about like stuff like that. And I, I, right. I feel like he kind of gets unnecessary flack for it. But, I mean, you can't down him because that's his story. He can't, you know, he can't right, pick right. another life. This, these are the cards that he was dealt. So, you know, he's he's just telling his side. I just kind of wish maybe if it was delivered a bit different. Because, really, a lot of these songs kind of cover the same thing over and over again. So, I, I don't know. Maybe I wish maybe there was some other angles he... He could have taken and actually I'm gonna I'm throw this out there I saw a YouTube reviewer who I thought had a genius idea of how this album could have went and what would have made it like on some Kendrick type type okay. stuff so um uh, uh YouTuber's name is Granddad Willie I'm gonna shout him out because this idea I thought Granddad was genius Willie. so remember like the I feel like the skits in this album to me I ain't gonna say they're out of place but I could have did it without them but uh, the YouTube reveal was like, well, the whole idea of the skits was, you know, the the whole like reincarnation thing that yeah. they were talking about like close to the end. And uh -huh. he was like, well, what Logic could have did to keep the reincarnation theme and still tie in the race theme was make the skits, one, chop the skits up, kind of like the Kendrick, like the poem into Pimp a Butterfly. Okay. So yeah. chop the skits up so that they're not dragging out every track. And then have it to where every every song or maybe every other song, like he's reincarnated as a different race or even as a different gender. So now he has to rap from like that person's perspective. And then you could have tied it all up. Actually, you could have kept like the last track, uh, Africa Aryan. You could have tied it all up with that. Yeah, yeah. And, okay. Yeah, and I, I was like, I, that to me, I was like, that would have been fire if he could have. Yeah, Instead of telling his story over and over and over again, you could have told a, a, a variety of other people's stories and then tied yours in, like, right at the end. Yeah, and... it's like, I, I was, like, that's the one thing that, and I've been listening to this album over and over again to the point where, like, I almost don't even want to listen to it anymore, but I've been trying to figure out, because, like, the, the album's called Everybody, and then you have, like, this thread of duality about him being, you know, half white, half black, which is cool. And then you kind of have like the whole the whole Neil deGrasse Tyson and and Adam uh, conversation going on, which you know uh, Tyson as God is like basically explaining that like he's a little bit of, of everything because he's being reincarnated every time and stuff. But I was like I still didn't see the the true thread of why like the album was called Everybody because it seemed for the most part he was sticking to the the perspective of of being half black half white and it didn't seem like there was much else in terms of like everybody being included in the in the album in terms of perspectives and i and i think like if he were to have taken a route like what you're talking about i think then it might have felt more like an album about everybody if that makes sense yeah i mean he he there were points where he i, I guess tried to include everybody but yeah like for the most part it kind of seemed like he focused on him which i mean i'm not mad you focus on you it's your album right, i'm not right. going to tell you that you can't rap about yourself but 
it it just seemed like it got i guess kind of i feel like maybe repetitive i guess is just the word like it just i don't know i was looking for something else than what he was doing it's not like what he was doing was bad but i was like i felt like this album could have been a lot better if maybe he just approached it or delivered it just a little different right right but i was gonna say i'll give him props though uh track number six america i thought that was flames like all the way through i mean anytime you get no id rapping on the track like right (laughs) (laughs) that's pretty cool yeah I was like, oh shit, is that no, no ID rapping on Right, that? you get no ID, you get a feature from Black Thought, you get a really dirty, oh, Chuck D too. Chuck you D. get a, a really just dirty, grimy beat. And then you get the Kanye jabs, which to me, that might have been like the best verse on the whole, <laughs> that, yeah. that might have been the best verse on the whole album, to be honest. Yeah, I, I, th- I liked America a lot. I liked, I think actually... I mean, take it back. I, I like take it back, and uh, despite the whole, you know, seven minute rant or whatever, I like take it back for the for the first part of it, and then I liked America a lot, and I actually I liked Ink a lot a lot. And I thought I was really disappointed that it was so short because I was hoping that it was gonna transition into more bars because you know you get that build up, and then you like then the beat kind of like transitions into him and juicy j going back and forth and like it was kind of simple simple rhymes or whatever but you know the energy of them going back and forth i was getting into that and the song just ends but i still i like that song a lot too and i thought that <laughs> that in america like really stood out and i like most definitely too i guess how do you how do you feel about the the slob on my knob that he just <laughs> that juicy j just <laughs> randomly threw in at the end right right i thought that was dope i thought that was dope and i thought um I don't know. I, I want to hear another song from them because I thought like the energy they had there was actually surprisingly good. Because yeah, that was a Juicy different J, look like, for Juicy J. That was a real different yeah, like, look. Yeah, I mean Juicy J is like pretty solid on any track you go on. Like you know, you kind of know what you're gonna get when he jumps on the song. But I just I wasn't sure what the dynamic between him and Logic would be because you know Logic is a little bit more of like the conscious nerdy kind of rapper, and I, I mean it played out pretty good. And I think. uh it sounded like Juicy J was having fun on it. Yeah, I was about to say yeah. It, yeah that, and then I feel like Juicy J was the one who kind of ran it. I mean, it wasn't a rant, but he kind of went on a little like right before the slob of my knob. He kind of just ran his mouth for about a good forty-five seconds. Right. Yeah, and I'm like so man, y'all could have so y'all could have still been trading bars, man. Could have. In, in in total, you got about twenty-five seconds worth of rapping in there, <laughs> which we just had to cherish, but. <laughs> I thought most definitely after that I thought it was pretty good. What'd you think? Alright. Alright, here we go. Most definitely. Uh. Oh man. I feel bad saying this. I feel so bad saying this. It's not a bad song. I'll say that. It's not a bad okay. song. There was something about when it started getting to the chant like the <laughs> black people. Yeah, yeah. It was so- <laughs> It was, it was too much. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I, <laughs> and like, I know, I know. You know, Hart was definitely in the right place. Like, I understood what he was going for. It was something about that part that was like, I don't know if this is too much or I think it's corny. Did it, did it, did it go on too long? Like, cause that at that part, like, it's basically repeating itself for. A yeah, while. yeah. Like, did it maybe just like go on too late? Maybe that was it. Yeah, maybe he could have cut that short just a little. I don't know, yeah, that part, I like almost chuckle when I hear it, <laughs> like, I don't know, it's something about that part that just gets me, it's not like I don't like it, but it's like, I don't know, I don't know, it could have been, yeah, maybe chop that in half, or, yeah, I don't know, I don't know, something about that part, it's not a bad song, though, it's not a bad song at all, and then, actually, we're pretty much going track by track, and then we got yeah. Waiting Room, which, to be honest, I don't even remember because I think after the first time I listened to it, I probably just skipped this. I bet, was this the one where he um, I can't remember. Did he explain like his his wife had died or I forgot? I can't remember. Yeah, it's. It, I mean, it's all just the skit, and I think it's like uh, I think this is where he tells him like you're about to become a slave master or something like that. And okay. Like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. You know, you're gonna be the the ninth lord of Fairfax or whatever the. the the thing 
Yeah, so I mean, I guess it's kind of like just a skit. Well, yeah, and it was like four minutes long of just... <laughs> I mean, the skits aren't like... The skits by themselves aren't terrible. It's just like, if he could have shortened them, or like we said earlier, like what Kendrick did, just chop them up in little bits and leave them at the end of the song so that they're not dragging on for so long because after a while it just messes up the flow of everything right, and right. i'm just like i don't i don't really care to hear this anymore i think that's and i mean we still got like you know four more tracks to get through or whatever but i feel like that's the problem with most of the albums it's just like it's never like bad i don't think there was any moment where i was really cringing well there was one <laughs> it actually is that suicide song but like, which, which i feel kind of bad but like, I mean, I think for the most part, like, the whole album was, like, like, you can hear the talent there. It wasn't, like, it was just some, like, trash, like, I don't know, like, Migos album or something like that. No offense to Migos. But... All right, so, oh. what what uh, what uh about the Suicide song that's next? What, what about that bug, dude? <laughs> you know, like, and I, Lupe did something like this, too, where, like, I guess, like, when he does, like, his cancer theme songs or whatever, right. like... These type of songs that are, like, meant to kind of, like, have a message to them to, like, empower people going through stuff, like, I don't mind there being a song that, like, empowers people, but I think, like, when your chorus is, when your song title is about a suicide hotline, and then your chorus is, I don't want to be alive, I don't want to be alive, I just want to die, I just want to die, like, it's so, like, just like an easy simple-minded way to approach like a topic that's actually pretty heavy and deep and like i guess the best type of song i can compare that to would be like that track off the Pippa butterfly from kendrick where he's like talking to himself and like basically like drinking and like kind of like having an inner conflict and like the suicidal thoughts or whatever like i feel like that's a more nuanced kind of smart way to approach a topic like that and just having a song saying like who can relate like it, it yeah. Felt like, it, it felt too easy. You know what I mean? And yeah. That kind of stuff gets to me at times. You know what? Now that you I say mean, that, that's kind of how I felt about the most definitely. Like, okay. yeah, it kind of like that to where like that. It's it's so surface level. Like right, right. like you could have dug a little bit deeper than what you did. Like I appreciate what you're doing, but if you're gonna go in, you gotta go in all the way. Like I like you just kind of tiptoed right, right. on it. Yeah, I, I yeah, like that song stuff though. That it's... We already know and, and have heard before. And right. I guess from a guy like Logic, we're looking for a little bit more depth and a little bit more of a, a new one to approach it. But I mean, the song like I do kind of sit back. I have to sit back sometimes and think like, how old is Logic's fan base? Like, are they younger people that maybe this song works better for them because they're a little bit younger and they're still like, you know just now getting into music in some ways so maybe this song is perfect for a younger you know 14 year old kid as opposed to yeah 26 year old like me you know what i mean like, right yeah because yeah I, 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 i'm pretty sure most of his fan base is really young yeah yeah so in a case like that i can see how like maybe a song like this why it would exist and like why it kind of it, it might work for a, a younger crowd just not me <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I, I can get that that criticism though. It was very, yeah, it was very kind of cookie cutter surface level. I think I just kind of liked the vibe of it. Like it just, I don't know. It it had a, a good vibe to it. It like I said, it, it didn't get too deep, but I don't know. I guess I just like the musicality of it. Like I can listen to it. It's it's pretty easy on the ears, which is weird because it's a track about suicide. Right, but, right. <laughs> but it's it's pretty easy like on the ears to listen to um this next track this might be the only song on here where i didn't mind the talking it, it did go on a little long but i think for me be just because of more of a personal connection of the topic that i was like okay i get the anxiety thing and like when he told the story I was like, all right, I I understand this. I definitely understand because I've, unfortunately, like this past year, I've had to deal with this. Like, it's a very real thing. Not yeah. to his extent. Luckily, I wasn't in line at Star Wars. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I wasn't. <laughs> I 
anxiety. Right. <laughs> I was I was at home, but like I underst I understood the 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 sentiment of what he was saying. So, but even on this one, I'll say. I feel like the verse could have been more like I don't know, like if if you've ever been through anxiety or if you know somebody who like has who suffers from it or like has ever had like a panic attack or anything like it's a really scary like moment and I, I feel like if you if you were to really really just sit down and write about it like you could you could write a whole like you could go so deep with it and this one kind of like the suicide song I, it was a little the, i guess you could say the story kind of went in depth but like the verse was kind of just it's kind of like just a little simple yeah it was it was kind of simple i was like this is definitely something you could have went in way deep on because it anxiety is connected to so much you know mental health is you know that's that's a huge you know issue that you could have went so deep into and he just kind of he just kind of skated across it just a little bit interesting thing is uh, uh if you check a uh, rap genius logic uh, actually chimed in on it on one of his verses and he talked about uh when Cuddy went to the hospital, he actually wrote him a letter um, just kind of talking about, like, his experiences because he knows that, you know, he's had issues, I guess, similar to Cuddy. Obviously, Cuddy's had his on a, on a grand stage as a, compared to Logic. But uh, he talked about how this song kind of came from that and, and was a part of, like, just looking at other people in his in his peer group, I guess you could say, and seeing how like everybody's going through like anxiety problems and and feeling a need to reach out to to these rappers going through it that don't necessarily talk about it all the time. I thought that was interesting about the track. I, in terms of like subject matter, like I can't really relate to some of it. Like you know, my girl has anxiety issues, and so like I can I can relate to it in that sense. But it just comes back to the whole like the speech is long as fuck. And, you know, I, and, and I'm completely down to hit. I'm completely down to hear everybody's like perspective in life, and like I find it interesting. But you know, at some point, I just want to, you know, kind of jam. Yeah, I, I think he probably could have cut it off. Like he told the whole movie part, and then he he went into detail about how he was like, you know, this. How is it just anxiety when I physically feel something wrong? Which I definitely understand because I've had that happen mm -hmm. to me, and it's a it's a weird feeling like literally one time i went to the er like when i had my first panic attack and i you couldn't tell me i wasn't about to die like i oh, <laughs> I, I thought it was over and like you, i go to the hospital and i'm describing it like to the guy in the er and i feel like he immediately knew what i was going through he's like super calm he's like you're, you're fine it's just you just gotta breathe i'm like okay. breathe i'm, I'm done like <laughs> but, <laughs> right <laughs> but, but oh, like sorry. i felt like right but i felt like after he got to that point Cause then he went on to like, we're gonna beat this, we're gonna do this, and we're gonna do that. And that when that point came, I'm like, I get it, you're you're being the champion right now, but it was another point where I was like, you could have chopped that speech a little, you know, we gotta wrap it up. Don't, I get it, I can relate to this, I go through this, but even me, I'm like, all right, man, we gotta, we still got two more songs to get through, and the last song is 12 minutes, so that's like three songs in one. <laughs> so, right. so, yeah. L luckily though i mean well i guess we should get the the black spider-man before we talk about africa airing and um i mean i don't know what do you, what do you think of it black spider-man i will be honest when i went back and listened to this album i don't remember the song sticking out too much That's so like insane, i don't really. i don't i can't even quote you a bar from this and it, and it might not even be a bad song i'm pretty sure it's decent because i remember this was one of the singles and when I first listened to it, I thought it was cool, but like after listening to the album over and over, yeah, this is not a song that I I can say I honestly go back to. Stands out. Yeah, I'm like I'm I'm kind of looking through the lyrics right now to see if there's something that stands out. Like I think the problem with with that song in particular might be because of where it's placed within the context of the album. Because if you've been if you're listening to the album from front to back. After anxiety, like I'm pretty sure you're you're a little fatigued from like the album and like the story that's going on behind it with like God and Adam and then like just trying to consume in what's going on with Logic and who he as who he is as a person. I think by the time you get to 
Black Spider Man, like I don't remember it being quite like a super energetic song that like it got me back into the album and at that point I was like, All right, we're almost done. You know what I mean? And like I don't know if maybe like it's a victim of its placement within the album. Um I think it's just a victim know, of it, a victim of the length of the album. Like Yeah, yeah. If this was only like a forty minute listen, I probably would have been fine. And I probably would go back to it. But yeah, when when you've been listening to an hour, an album for like 50 plus minutes, after a while you're like, bro. And and with this album, if you're looking at the track listing, and you see African area and it's 12 minutes, you're like, bro, we gotta, right, we gotta wrap this up, man. But I mean, I will say though with Logic, I I don't mind songs that are that long when they're ending the album. I don't like seven minute intros. That's not cool. But I don't mind a long track if you place it like towards the middle or the end because um I love Under Pressure from the first album. And that 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 track is I think 9 minutes long and I can play that all the way through no problems. Dope every time I listen to it. Um I like African Area though. I thought this was <laughs> All right, hold on. This track made me think of something. So why are people so up in arms that Logic says nigga? Like why? Where? Where does this come from? I don't know, man. Like, I, like, so when Logic first came out, I thought he was a white boy. Like I'm sure a lot of people did. Then I found out he was half black, and I was like, all right, cool. You know, that's his thing. And then I mean, like, I don't have any authority over that word, so like, I can't really tell you why or why not people should be mad at him. But I mean, it seems as though like, I mean if he considers himself black and if he's half black, then I don't understand why he wouldn't have the right to say that word. And I don't understand why people get mad, but if I had to take a guess, it would just be because in terms of like his style and like his approach and the way he speaks regularly, maybe he comes off as a white boy and maybe that kind of rubs people the wrong way, which I guess is the point of this album. Yeah. That's, that's the only thing I can think of. Yeah. He, he, he comes across as quote unquote white because he he speaks properly so on and so forth, but I feel like he's dropped the n bomb before. I could be wrong, but I'm I'm pretty sure I've heard at least one one mixtape. Not a lot. I know he doesn't say it a lot, but is is that what it is? Has he just not like? I mean, I listen to so much rap that that word kind of like you don't think about it. <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's, a, it's a word to rhyme something with at this point when it comes to right. Rap music. It's a placeholder. So yeah, so, like, I never really, like, I didn't notice that Logic doesn't use that word. Yeah, because I listen to, I still listen to Under Pressure a lot. And, yeah, I don't, I don't think he dropped, he might have dropped it once, maybe. Mm-hmm. Even with the Incredible True Story, because I, I kind of listen to that one a lot, too. I don't think he dropped it on that either. So, I think it was just that you went two albums without hearing it, maybe even more than that, including his mixtapes. And then he says nigga one time, and dudes are like, hold up. <laughs> like, I didn't you, know that was in your do, vocabulary. Do you, feel, do you feel like there's something, like, fraudulent in that? Like, maybe he's, like, I don't know, like, trying to take, like, I don't want to say the word gangster, because that's not the right word, but do you think, like, he's kind of, like, trying to take on, like, that style of, I don't know, that personality that's not necessarily true to him, maybe that's I, like, offending people? I can't say that, because... It, if you listen to it in like the context that he's using it, because in African Aaron he's talking about, uh, uh, I can't remember how the hook went. Uh, something about I go back in time, uh, my nigga dad, my cracker mom, stop the pregnancy. Something I can't remember the line like word for word, but like the context that he's using it, like I understand it. Like he's not just throwing it out there just to. It's not like a Wayne verse where you just rhyme nigga. <laughs> like, <laughs> you just rhyme it with itself. And you just... <laughs> yeah, like, he's he's using it, like, I guess, like, with a purpose, if that's even the right way to say it. But yeah, I, I didn't... To be honest, when I heard him say it, I didn't blink. Like, I didn't... I didn't... It didn't bother me at all. And, yeah, I'm not going to tell... Yeah, it didn't... And I, I'm not going to tell people that, you know, they can't feel a certain type of way. Just, I personally, I don't, I, I don't get it. Like, I, I'm, I'm not mad. I'm not, I mean, it'd be one thing if he was just like, you know, in bomb, in bomb every track and like, right. it didn't really have a, a reason, but you know, well, he like, said it like three times in a whole album. Like, yeah. And like, I think, okay. So like, I'm kind of looking at the lyrics right now and like, 
Um, I mean, when he's saying when he's dropping it, he's also calling like his mom a cracker. So he, like he's calling, he's saying like the N bomb, like referring his dad as the N bomb, and then his mom is the cracker. You know what I mean? So like, I guess like he's kind of playing off like just a racial epithet yeah, yeah. towards each other. Period. Like, I mean, I know cracker doesn't hold that kind of weight, but. I guess that's what he was getting at. I mean, yeah, again, like, he was again, he was like, playing you know, both sides. I, I don't know much about the politics of, of that word or like or like where I should line it, but like just from like an outsider's perspective looking in, it just kind of seems like if if and I I didn't I didn't realize he wasn't using that word before, but it it seems like he's just a- analyzing again going back to the title of the song African Aryan, like it just it seems like he's just analyzing where he stands and. And in that mud of just being mixed with, you know, two different races and and trying to figure out what he, what is him and what isn't him. And I think if you if you look at it like that, then I, I don't know. It, it seems a little, I I can't really see a thread of like where you should be offended at. But, yeah. So I'll I'll leave logic. that alone. <laughs> right, <logic. laughs> right. I feel like he can't he can't win no matter what he does. He, like he made it's. A whole about being biracial and the struggles that come with that and how both people hate on him and people hate on him for doing it. Right. <laughs> so he proved every he proved his point right, by, right. by the backlash that he gets. Um so this uh this lo fi J. Cole verse at the end. How how are we feeling about this? Um I actually loved it because and I don't know if it would have I, I like the idea that, like, J. Cole just probably sitting somewhere in his room and he was like, yo, like, I see what Logic's doing. He's got an album coming out. Let me just, let me kick him a quick little verse real quick. Just as a, you know, hey, like, hey, yo, here's a verse for you just for yourself. Like, almost like a letter or something like that. Yeah. Like, that's that's how I play it out of my head. Like, he almost, it's almost like he wrote Logic a letter just saying, like, yeah, this is for you. And I like it like that. Like, if J. Cole did that for Kendrick and did that for... Uh, Wale, sorry. Uh, you know, like, you know what I mean. Like, I like the idea that J Cole just hits up people with random lo-fi verses that aren't necessarily for anything other than just to, you know, give them some perspective in life. And so, I liked it in in that context. I don't know if it really fit with the rest of the album, but I mean, what do you think? Yeah, I was, other than the lo-fi like sound of it, which I thought was kind of weird. Like, mm. if you pay attention to the verse, the verse is fire. Yeah, like, he's, kicking, he's kicking a lot of games. Yeah, like, the verse is super dope. It's just people probably don't... And I get it. You hear the sound of it, and you're like, wow, would I want to listen to this? Because it's so... You, you can barely hear it. But, like, he's really kicking him game. Yeah. And it, it, I think it's cool, too, because J. Cole is biracial also. Right, So, right. like, if you think about it from that perspective, and then you kind of, like, pay attention to the lyrics, it's like... He's kind of giving him, he's kind of like just trying to give Logic advice and how he kind of sees the whole biracial thing and how it affects him and things like that. So, yeah. yeah. I I can't remember the bars per se, but he's like telling him, he's like, yo, like, I know you're like struggling with this whole biracial thing, but like in terms of being a rapper, like, don't worry about that. Just be yourself and, and don't worry if people love you for being black or being white or being mixed just kind of you know do it because it makes you happy and i thought that's pretty cool and you know to get back to the whole lo- lo-fi feel of it i think that's what i liked the best because it kind of felt like it felt like it was handwritten you know what i mean it wasn't there wasn't no there wasn't like glitzy production behind it or you know there was no ad libs it was just like this kind of homemade patched together kind of thing that was just sent and i and i and i like that about it because um you know i I record music and like a lot of times before i get into the studio i'll just have my phone playing and then i'll have something you know like recording me in the background and it'll sound a lot like that and i think like as a musician like sometimes even though i'll have like a finished completed track I'll go back and listen to that lo-fi recording I had when it was just a demo when I was just kind of like rapping it by myself and like there's something more intimate about that you know what I mean there's no again there's no like glitz or glam or production behind it it's just like it's just raw and it's all about the words or whatever and 
I think that's what kind of stuck out to me, and that's what I liked about it. And maybe that's just like me being soft on it because I record songs like that sometimes, and because you know I'm always behind the boards recording something, so like I can appreciate the the uh, the intimate kind of lo-fi vibes. Yeah. It was like he hit him up on the phone. It it, it yeah. literally sounded like that was recorded on like a flip phone. <laughs> it was, right. it was, well, but yeah, it, right. But yeah, but yeah, it had a good, it had a, a real, I guess, authentic like feel to it. Like he really was just trying to give him advice, like it was like a friend calling a friend, just right, giving right. him game. So yeah, it was, it was, it was dope though. So. Oh, somehow I just lost a track listen. All right, so this was 13 tracks. I don't I don't like doing album ratings, but just 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 for the sake of it. Um, what what would you give this uh, on a scale like a one to ten? I don't know, man. I've actually been conflicted about this because we've been kind of talking about the fact that we're gonna do this review for a couple of days now, and so like I've been thinking like, dang, like out of a one to five or one to ten, what would I rate it? And like. In some aspects, I would easily give it a, like, five or six because, I mean, when I really think about what songs I'm going to be, like, playing over and over again for the next, you know, until the next release, I don't know that there's too many songs that I'll get back to on here. But I feel like if I say it's a five or a six, I'm kind of diminishing the, like, I'm, like, saying that it's, like, now in, in the same category as some other albums that I give a five or six that I don't think are quite as good as this one in terms of message and production and stuff like that but um i don't know i guess a, a, a six to seven might be where i land somewhere yeah there. i was I'm, I'm leaning towards like a, a 6.5 ish okay. and my my main thing is i judge albums a lot based on replay value mm-hmm. and i feel like this for me like yeah, like you said, I, I, there's not a lot of songs on here. Like, I'll go back, I'll listen to America. Um, I'll probably listen to the Suicide Joint. I'll listen to everybody. But uh, there's a lot of else on this album I'm just probably not going to get the urge to come back to. Mm-hmm. And I think out of his his major releases between this, Under Pressure, and the Incredible True Story, I hate to say it, but I think, for me, this is the worst one. And not... I feel like that's makes it sound like it's terrible but like to me compared to those two this one doesn't in some ways it's better i think production wise is better but as an overall total album i don't think it's as good as those two did you uh did you listen to bobby tarantino i did not i oh i might have heard like a track or two i never sat and listened to the whole thing i thought like because prior to like the main beef i've had with logic um is that like i don't think he has his own sound like, you know, like a lot of songs I feel like could have been a Kendrick or J. Cole or Drake song. You know what I mean? And um, I feel like Bobby Tarantino was like a perfect example of that. But I felt like he started to kind of he 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 was nailing it. Like he was just he was getting it done good. It's like a, like a big Sean kind of thing where like it was just enjoyable or whatever. So I was getting down with it. And I was kind of disappointed because going into this album, I felt the production still wasn't necessarily all just like him. It, it still sounded like it could have it could have been a, a a Kendrick song or it could have been a Drake song or it could have you know what I mean? Like, like it felt like he was just going on YouTube and typing in like Drake type beat. And Hold up, I'm losing you a little bit. Making music off of that, and I think like I mean, what what standard are we supposed to hold Logic to? You know what I mean? Like, is uh, is he somebody that we're going to... I know you, you have, like, some mixed films on Kendrick, but I think, like, you could accept the fact that in terms of, like, this mainstream, kind of like the rappers that are in front of us type of field, like, we hold Kendrick and, and J. Cole and, uh, I don't know, maybe Drake and Big Crit. Like, we all hold them to a certain level, a certain set of expectations. And like logic to that set of expectations, like should he be developing his own sound and type of beats? Yeah, I don't know where he, where he falls on this. Like, yeah, I'm not gonna, I can't put him up there with a Kendrick, probably not even a Cole. He's like 
trying to think of like a comparison to make. Like he he's not all right, I guess to draw a sports analogy. He wouldn't be he's not a new your New England Patriots. He's not your uh-huh. Atlanta Falcons. He's kind of like he's like your New Orleans Saints. Like okay. he is entertaining to watch. He's capable of doing something really 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 great. But like um like I I have expectations for him, but I'm like I I don't, I don't know like I I don't get my hopes up too much because yeah like I don't I don't think he's gonna hit it out the park every single time. But like I right. I expect something good, but I guess I I don't know if it's gonna be great. I I think he can be great, but I don't know if I'm gonna get that. So so I, you're just not holding him to that. Yeah, 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 it's it's kind of hard to explain. Yeah, I never really thought of it like that. That's where the conflict lies because that's where I I held Wale <laughs> to speak about somebody else from Maryland. <laughs> I held I, I held Wale to a certain standard, and he never actually met that standard once he signed a Maybach. But like I kept like holding him to the fact that like all right, dude, like you got to put out like a quality quality album because I felt like. He should be that type of rapper that gives us quality music. And, like, obviously he hasn't done it. So now I've kind of, like, I, and it sucks to say this, but I put Wale, like, in the same category that I'd put people now, like, 2 Chains or Juicy J. Where, like, <laughs> oh, man. It, it sucks to say that, but it's not to say they're trash because I like 2 Chains and I like Juicy J a lot. But I don't expect, um, it's a pimp a butterfly from them. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I don't, I don't expect... I don't expect uh, a, a full back, front to back kind of quality album. I just expect some tracks here and there that you know I can fuck with, and then some other you know little stuff, and that's about it. Yeah, Wale. And, and that's what well, I mean, Wale. I haven't really heard much tracks period lately that I like, but like now I'm just kind of like I'm holding that standard, and I'm pushing logic forward, and like kind of expecting that. I mean, granted, I guess this next album coming out is Logic's last album, supposedly. Allegedly. Every, I don't believe it. That's what every rapper says. But, uh, you know, like, so, like, I'm wondering if I should hold Logic to that esteem now, like. Uh, oh, I do hold Logic definitely to a higher standard than Wale. Yeah, Wale, for me, it's no no disrespect to the dude. Like, he's he's mad talented, but he's he's like, I guess another sports analogy. He's like the San Diego Chargers. Like, I think he's a classic case of underachieving. Like, like an RG3. Right. Yeah, like, there's no reason why you should be... And, I mean, I get it. He's he, he's selling out shows still, so, you know, what yeah, what do I know? Yeah. But, <laughs> but as, I get, yeah, just as a fan, yeah, because I remember, I still listen to some of his early... Like back to the feature was serious. Um, I even thought his first album, Attention Deficit, was really dope. More about nothing was dope. Mixtape about nothing was fire. Mm-hmm. And then he just kind of hit this. And it's it's weird. I feel like he him he has this. In, I can't even say inconsistency now, because now I feel like it's been consistently just I'm not interested anymore. <laughs> like because <laughs> I was. Not good. Right, yeah. I was gonna say like Lupe, where to where like Lupe will give you like a classic, and then he'll give you something like Drogas, and I'm like, bro, do you you did not just do this to me? Like, <laughs> but like with Lupe, right. I, I have hope. Like I'm like, all right, he gonna get me with the next one. With Wale, I'm just like, I don't think the next one. I don't care about the next one anymore. Like, right. And I guess to tie it back to Logic, I am gonna say if if this is. If this next one is his last one, or even if it's like his last album for a while, like maybe he just takes a couple years off, the next one you got you gotta hit it out the park. Like this next yeah. one has to be on the level of an under pressure. You gotta have a classic. You gotta have like that one album that just. I think like if we're gonna hold him at his, because I mean everybody wants to be the best rapper ever, but I think like Logic, it's fair to say like. He's he's somewhere near the bar ballpark of like contending for being a really respected rapper, and I think like it's time for him to kind of give us his his classic or the closest thing he can give us to that is his classic. And 
I mean, I hope it's not gonna be like some of his older stuff. I hope like he still got another one in him. Um, so we'll see. I mean, he's he's teasing this next album to be some kind of big, you know, fanfare. Uh, you know, like it's supposed to be something that's never been done before. So. Oh lord. Maybe that can either be really great or really terrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really, it's, where would you? I was gonna say the the switch of gears, but still kind of uh, nah, whatever. Where would you put Big Crit in like this hierarchy? I guess, cause my opinion of Crit, and I guess I'm about to just completely switch gears. Uh, I guess just to quickly end logic, solid okay. album. That's okay. that's all I'll say. But <laughs> Crit, solid. I think Crit, Crit to me is super dope. Like he does everything. But I don't get, like, I feel like he should be up there with, well, okay, no, I can't say that. I think Crit's problem is the mixtapes, fire, all the way through. Albums, eh, hit or miss sometimes. Though, I, I, Catalactica grew on me a lot, though. I, I love Catalactica a lot, actually. Yeah. And like, I, I think, like, and I guess, you know, like, I've, I've never listened to full Crit mixtapes. I've more or less been the kind of guy that, like, I've just, like, I've picked up a bunch of songs here and there, and, like, I've liked everything I've heard, and, like, I listened to, uh, what came before Catalactic? It was a mixtape, uh. Um, that was King Remembered in Time. It had, like, the gold cover. Yep, yep. Yeah, and, like, Fire. Thought, that tape that was, was so dope. good. I thought that was dope, and then I was, like, when I heard Catalactic, I was, like, all right, you're going a little bit more mainstream here, but that's okay, because... You know, like I, he's he's a type of rapper that unfortunately, because he's a southern rapper, that's got like that conscious element to it. Like those guys, for whatever reason, don't get any love when it comes to like the mainstream. I mean, you see how long it took Killer Mike to kind of get on, and like I don't know that he was always conscious in all of his music or whatever, but you know, I, so I could see why a, a rapper like Crit might need to play to a little bit more pop friendly ear. I just I'm looking for I'm looking for his classic too, and like going back to your question of where would I put him, um, I wouldn't put him necessarily up there with like Cole and Kendrick and I mean I don't know if you'd put Drake up there but I, I put Drake up there for other reasons but if those are the three I would put Crit on that next tier of like guys I'm watching for to see where they where they take their next aggressive swipe at the at the throne so to speak. I'm looking at. I have my iTunes pulled up, and I'm looking at all my Big Crit songs. Okay. I listen to... I never realized I listened to him so much. Like, <laughs> I'm looking at, like, because it tells you how many times you've listened to a song. Right, right. Bruh, I've, <laughs> I've been OD'ing. <laughs> he's yeah, like, I was... Like, he's yeah, doing, he's... Like, he does his own production, and, like, I mean, I can't look at anything from Crit and really, like, hate on it. Like, there may be a song or two that... Or some questionable moves here and there, but for the most part, like I mean, I think he's a he's just he's a good rapper that just hasn't had his moment yet, in 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 the light the way he should have. I thought actually he had the best verse on Lupe's last album. Um, for that, Tranqu- that's, Tranquilo, right? Or <laughs> Which is crazy, like big crit out bar Lupe, just right. Just let that sink in. And not to say, right, not to say that Crit is a bad rapper, but Lupe is, like, God-level penmanship. Yeah, you you expect nothing but the the best Lupe. And Crit just came through and bodied him and Rick Ross for a play. All right. I'm, I'm going to tackle two more things before we wrap up. Uh, two more. What was that? Two more rappers. Yes. Right, so I'm, I'm going to tackle two more rappers before we wrap up. Um... Okay. Oh man, I, I said two. Who was I thinking of? Actually, no. I, I'll just say one until I remember the other one. Um, what? All right, I, I'll throw it out there. I'm not a big, I'm not a big Drake guy. Okay. And it's not that I don't think he's talented. It's just for me personally, his music doesn't do much for me. Like mm-hmm. I hear it and I'm like, all right, this is cool. But like I can't. I'm not sitting through a whole Drake album. I haven't listened to a whole Drake project since um, sure. whatever that album was when he was staring in the cloud. <laughs> whatever that one was. Uh, Nothing was I forgot. Yeah. yeah, that one. Which I thought was yeah. a, a pretty good album, though. Like, it wasn't bad. But, like, what is his... 
Here, like his next here, step. And and I've I've had a lot of time to think about this because I know a lot of like in the circle of hip hop heads, I know a lot of people don't respect him or don't like him. And a lot of those people say like, yeah, I like some Drake songs, but I I wouldn't consider him on any type of top five rap list or something like that. And like I could I would agree with that. I probably wouldn't put him in my top five for any kind of rap list. But in terms of like the current stage of rappers that we have right now, I feel like he he occupies that is a part of rap and hip hop that we can't deny. Like he occupies that space of of that mainstream hip hop rap, and I feel like he does it to like a, a almost scary kind of like dominant force, and I feel like it's still a point where you can't deny it. You may not like it, but you gotta at some point be like, yo, like this guy, he's connecting with m millions of people every time he drops an album. You know what I mean? He's been consistently consistent with his numbers. And I feel like that means that he has to be connecting with some people. Even if it's not with us hip hop heads, he's connecting with somebody. And I feel like that that's something that I just personally couldn't ignore. And that's why I put him in that category as three. I feel like Kendrick embodies what I'd want out of like I don't know, kind of like a dense painterly type of rapper, and then J Cole. Just for me, I, he's that that conscious woke kind of whatever cliche term you want to throw on it. Like he's just he's that dude with the with, that's in the stocks, and I like that about J Cole. And so like I feel like everybody they fit their own little spots. I, I listen to Drake when I just want to turn up, or if I want to be like mad emo about my girlfriend or something like that, then like <laughs> play some Drake, but. If I want hip hop, I might lean more towards Kendrick. I don't know. I mean, do you think he deserves to be like in the top three current rappers? Top I mean, rappers? you're definitely a bigger hip hop head than me, and you listen to a lot more like of the underground uh, stuff like that than I do on a consistent basis. It's it's hard because yeah, you can't. As much as I might not be a fan, and I, I don't mean, I make this argument all the time that numbers don't tell the entire story, but when your numbers are that big, you can't you can't just ignore it. You can't just act like it's not there. Like he's right. obviously doing something right, and I don't even he's not a bad rapper. Like I think it's just I don't know. He's scary though, man, because it's like he's almost at this point where I feel like he can do no wrong. Like, like no matter what he does, he could drop an EP with three songs tomorrow and it would probably go platinum. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> like he, he's hit this scary kind of power that like I don't think a lot of people, a lot of people don't get to this level. And I don't even know how he got there. Like, well, like let me let me throw this at you and and you can kind of tell me what you think about it. Like, I feel like. We, if we really, really, really get down to the to the basics, right? Like the whole point of being a rapper, or whatever, is to be like the best MC, right? And part of being the best MC is that you gotta get people going and you gotta get people invested in who you are as a person. You know what I mean? Like they gotta they gotta look at you and 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 relate or something, to, you know, and that way you can control the crowd. And I feel like with Drake, his thing is like you know who Drake is, whether you hate who Drake is or whether you love who it is, like. You know exactly who he is, and I feel like, in a way, he's just like, I don't want to say a really good MC, but he embodies that charisma of what an MC should have in a certain kind of way. And I feel like that works to his benefit. And I'm not saying an MC in the case of, like, how KRS-One is an MC, but, like, he's just, I don't know, there's something about him in his personality that I think a lot of people will get invested in. And that's why you see so many like memes with them and you see so much other stuff surrounding him outside of the music that then, I don't know, it just gets back. It, it just makes it more appealing that when he does drop an album, you're like, oh shit, I know he's been you know, beefing with Meek. I want to hear what he has to say now. You know what right. I mean? Yeah, it's, it's weird to think about where he started too because I remember... I remember listening to like the very very first mixtape comeback season if you'd have told me that that guy 
was gonna and, and the comeback season was dope don't get me wrong if you'd have told me that guy was gonna be on top of the world like i wouldn't have believed you <laughs> and like he i don't know i it's weird and i guess it's to his credit that i can't explain like i don't know like jay-z i can i know how jay-z got big for one jay-z's just regardless of how you might feel about his recent music yeah and i'm not even a huge jay-z fan but jay got bars but yeah. Jay also is a, he's like a mogul. He's like, he's a, he has a presence about him. And I don't think Drake has that. It's not the same as Jay, but it's just, it's something. And I don't know what it is that he can just get people that to just kind of just, they just gravitate to what, I, and I'm interested to see like how long does this streak go? How long like, does the run go? How long before because and, and not to sound like I'm hating on him, but I feel like he's almost in a way in the same place that Wayne was when Wayne was on top. Because there was a point when Wayne could do no wrong. Like from the Carter one up until mm, say the Carter three, maybe a little after. Like Wayne was in that spot too, to where like he could do no wrong and right. we kinda see well his situation is a little different. He got label issues and all that, you know, whatever. But I almost feel like Drake surpassed that. Like, yeah, well, and I don't. I, I, I think it's purely music based to a certain extent because, like, if you look at Wayne, right after he dropped the Carter Three, Carter Three was shaky. I think for for some people, some people loved it. I thought it was kind of shaky. Um, but then he had like I'm Not a Human, and he had like that rock yeah. album, and like. I think that kind of, like, it started to chip away pretty hard at, like, where he stood. With Drake, I think you... I liked I liked More Life for what it was. Um, but I think that it's smart of him to kind of lay low now for a little while. And, uh, and you know, come back in 2018 with something new. And I think... Uh, I, and I've mentioned this before. Like, I think people have a Drake fatigue. I think they're just... We've been bombarded with Drake for like the past 10 years, constantly hit after hit. And I think people now are looking for a reason to hate on him. And I think the smart move to, to, to make is one where you just kind of lay low for a little bit and, and let people just kind of digest all the stuff you've put out and, you know, and chill out. And I think that's the way you maintain that consistency of, of selling out and, and doing number one albums, stuff like that is... It's just to, to know when you've done too much and when you need to pull back and, and give people a break. I hope for... His, well, I guess I'm, I'm probably not who he aims his music to because I'm not a huge fan anyway. I, I think a, a, a big part of my problem with with Drake is like, I don't... It's something about like just like the sonics of his music. Like, I don't know. Like, I felt like at first, when he first started, that he kind of had his own thing kind of going. But now I feel like when I listen to him that he's not so much different than everybody else. Like, well, do you think I don't know. Is, do you think he's not different than everybody else, or do you think everybody else is copying off of him now? Because I feel it like, might be both. <laughs> I feel like it could be both. Because when if you're reading this, uh, if you're reading this is too late came out, like you know he had like that production kind of like has set a precedent, and I feel like everybody now raps on beats like that, and like there's like the whole like the six sound. And I feel like it's a it's a sound that's not too different from regular kind of trap rap music that we're used to, but it's still inherently like I tie that to like that Toronto Drake sound. And I feel like everybody raps on that kind of stuff now if they're not just doing straight up trap beats or doing the whole soul funk type stuff. And I feel like for Drake, if he's the king of the whole mainstream side of hip hop and rap then everybody underneath him, like your Tigers and your, uh, I can't even think of this dude that's always copied and him and Drake are beefing, but, uh, there's a lot of rappers I know that are just doing stuff that sounds like Drake, Drake beats. And I wonder if that is kind of like blurred, if now, like, it just feels like Drake is doing nothing but mainstream when really he's just doing his sound that he had to begin with. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think, actually, now that you explain it, I, I think. I think one thing he does do really well, which probably is why he's so big, 
he can walk the line of my music is I think you can safe say at this point it's pretty incredibly mainstream like it's mm-hmm. leaning all the way over but like he makes it accessible to the the majority of, of people because hip hop heads whether you want to deny it or not we're not the majority <laughs> we're we're not the mass public we right. got numbers don't get me wrong but we're pro- we're not the majority so he knows how to appeal to the majority he's skilled enough as a rapper to where he's not it's not like a abc rhyme scheme it's not anything overly complicated lines aren't going over your head but right. you know like he he does everything good enough to where it just he can reach the most people because he can do everything just good enough regardless of if you like the sound or not like any what it takes to reach the the most mass amount of people he has that skill to where he because ev- that is a skill i think like a lot of people you can be a, a a technically skilled rapper or mc but there's still you still have to have like a certain feel like a certain sound to you that makes a lot of people want to listen to you yeah, and yeah. he somehow found that that balance of i'm not a great rapper but i'm good enough to make this sound i can rap good over it to where i'll access way more people than this underground guy who you know his mic skills might be a 10 but his personality and everything else is kind of you know yeah, uh, it's, it's well. Like I think part of that has to do with just the fact of like, because he's not like, you know, the most renowned lyricist. Um, I think he knows that, and he, he, his word choice. He he says things that like, are pretty relatable to a lot of people. You know what I mean? Even if they are s- simple, he puts right. it in a way that like it hits home for a lot of people. Like the line about going to cheesecake and arguing. <laughs> It's, it's a pretty simple ass line but at the same time like we've all been there where like we've gone out to like our favorite place to eat and like the person we're with that like we're in love with or whatever we get in like stupid petty arguments and like you know what I mean like I think like it's that kind of like attention to detail and keeping the lyrics super simple but at the same time like making it relatable almost to the point where it's like you know almost like hyper realistically relatable you know what i mean like right. arguing about taking like the nice car out to get tampons and like you know what i mean like it's just stuff like it's just stuff like that that like most rappers don't talk about or if they do it, it just comes off as inauthentic but for him right. for whatever reason it just feels like yeah okay I, I can you can picture it you yeah, can yeah. picture drake doing yeah yeah that's definitely true and that's... So, and I, i'd assume that's where like the 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 biggest part of his draw comes from is just like just everybody can relate to drake everybody knows drake the the people he surrounds with him eventually turn on him and stab him in the back or, or try to come for his throat and so we can all relate to that because we all know there's people out there that like you know fuck us over in one place or in one way or another and like right. I, I i i don't know i just think that he's not that great of he's not the best writer he doesn't have the best flow but he has a way of saying things that somehow relate to people um, with just the way he chooses to, to say each word or whatever. Something that he said he, he thinks a lot about. He thinks a lot about his word choice and word structure. So I think maybe that's where it's at. And if you look at it, a lot of rappers since then have kind of tried to adopt that style. And I mean, that's something Kanye kind of came out with first maybe in some ways because Kanye was the first kind of rapper to, or I don't want to say first, but he was one of the the pioneers of that whole like self-conscious kind of rap and right especially in mainstream right right like you know yeah. i mean you just look back to all falls down and like you know like the whole thing was just about like observing yourself and all the, the flaws we have as people or whatever and i think like drake is somebody who's just kind of taken that torch or that baton and and it's really lit it on fire in a certain kind of way and for some people that works other people it's just like oh my god how many times are you gonna you know <laughs> cry about this but... right <laughs> well, well, whatever he's doing it's, it's working it's working all right so I, I thought of the other rapper so uh I'll, I'll end it with this i was uh finally remembered so um silk the shocker. Lu- Lu- lupe oh no we'll, i'll never talk about <laughs> silk <laughs> <laughs> oh man he let trina body him on the track 
so. No, oh, man. Hey. But Lu- Lupe. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know. Lupe, <laughs> Lupe should be, by all accounts, if we were if if we were tracking Lupe's trajectory right before lasers when he dropped that enemy of the state mix a, Lupe should have been the king right now. If, if you would have asked me ten years from now, where's Lupe? Gonna be? I'd have been like, go. He, you know, he he would be the one. I always thought Lupe would be the guy to put out a to pimp a butterfly type album. I always thought he'd be the one to put out a. a um, a Forest Hills Drive kind of thing. Like, I just, I thought he was going to be the one that could tackle all those different type of issues in, like, creative and, like, fun and interesting ways. And, like, I th- I thought, um, shit, what is the one before, uh, Tetsu and Youth. Tetsu and Youth, I thought Tetsu and Youth was okay, and it, and it grew on me more as time went on. But, like, I mean, what the fuck, man? Like, like, don't, don't you feel like he's just like like don't you feel like the story of Lupe is always like alright hype up the album the album comes out people don't like it Lupe blames the label says the next one's gonna be the fire one you get the next one it's a little bit better but it's not quite quite where you think it should be and then right. he drops another trash album or something like that like I don't know like what do you think yeah, he he's a weird. I don't understand his. If you just look at his career as a whole, it's just it's weird to look at. Like you come out the gate with food and liquor. You come out with the cool, which for me is like, I don't throw the word classic around a lot. For me, that is a classic. And it was weird is that album's like twenty songs, and I normally hate albums that are that long. I can listen to that almost all the way through. Yeah, I mean, like shit, man, like. I was uh, I was at a homie's house the other day, and like he broke down crying because he had, he had just recently realized that a girl he was like dating was like had like a heroin problem or whatever, mm. and like we just we were just like going through it was right before Drogas came out, so we were going through the catalog just kind of like catching up on on Lupe again, and he heard Intruder Alert and like that shit like had a profound uh, effect on him because like he heard it and he heard like just like the verses about uh the chick like not knowing when to stop or whatever or like the dude right. the dude like not knowing that uh shit was tearing him down and, like he can relate to that and i feel like there's a lot of tracks on the cool that yeah. like that where like fucking hip-hop you saved my life like that shit was fucking insane uh paris Tokyo, like i mean shit every song on there was just flame but then he went from that to what what came out after that that was lasers yeah, then we got the lasers, which was but in, in, that, that had and that's that the, had like two, two or three passable songs, maybe. <laughs> and that's the thing, cause like, okay, so like lasers, the story about lasers is that like there were supposedly las- uh, label issues with Atlantic at that time, and that's why right. lasers was like mediocre. But if you listen to Enemy of the State, which came out right before, did you, you heard that right? Yeah, Enemy of the State was was. <sighs> That might have been. That's a goat mixtape. Like, <laughs> if you, yeah, if y'all have never heard that, that mixtape is so good. And Jesus, that. And so, like, when I heard that, and I heard Lasers, I was like, all right, I understand that Lasers probably wasn't supposed to be a good album because of the label right. issues. But hearing that, I was like, okay, that just means the next one is gonna be great. And the next one was what Food and Liquor Two. Or? Food and Liquor Two. And, yep, yep, the Great American Rap album. Yeah, I don't remember that album pretty much at all. Yeah, had, like, I don't think there's much to remember. Shit like that. He did it. that, and I think he did another mixtape that was, uh, what was it called? Friend of the People, and that one had like two good songs. Did I'll it? give a shout out to SLR though, because SLR was a mean track. Yeah, I think but, I remember SLR. And... Yeah, SLR and uh, Double Burger with Cheese. <laughs> Double Burger with Every, everything else on that tape was just... Cause he was rapping over like those EDM beats, and yeah, I was like, yeah, "No, yeah, we don't. No, yeah, we don't need that from you." And then, I felt like he just disappeared after that. Like we didn't hear from him for a while. And then I think right before Tetsu, I can't remember if Feral Height came before or after Tetsu on News. Mm. But like Feral Height was was a mean tape. And yeah, like you said, Tetsu on Youth kind of. I my first initial listen, I thought it was just okay. But that's actually an album that lately I've been going back to and realizing how good it actually was. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not it's not on the level of a cool or yeah. a food and liquor. But, like, it's a good, it's a solid album. 
I mean, when you stack it up against Drogas it's light. Like, right. <laughs> all of a sudden, you know, our, our Yeah, Drogas, that might be the first album I've ever listened to where the more I listened to it, I literally started to get angry. Like, I remember getting through, like, the first half of that album, and I was like, okay, he's going for the trap sound. I guess I'm just going to accept it, whatever. And then, like, track eight, it completely switched, and it started doing this pop, I don't know what was ha I got so angry. Like, I, I couldn't... I finished it, somehow. I think I listened to it twice. And then I never listened to it. I, I just couldn't, like... I was... I've never been so hurt by an artist before. Never. I can't... I can't think of anybody else who stabbed me just like that. down that hard. <laughs> you know, like... like and, and this goes back to that Suicide Hotline track that we were talking about. Like, Lupe of all people is the guy that you expect to like kind of like really dig in deep and give you some wordplay and give you some like some layers that you got to listen to the damn track you know 20 times before you truly get everything you know he's saying like i listen yeah, to I'm, mural. I'm still catching balls about yeah i was just gonna say that <laughs> still listen, catching bars on mural right and so like <laughs> you listen to uh, Joker's light and like he's got a lot of songs there like where like he he's basically parroting modern day hip hop which is fine like I get it like tired of hearing about dr drugs and guns and, and all that but like the songs are so simple like made in the USA is just him like you know like my AK come from Alabama you know like just like <laughs> made in America and it's just why like, was that one of the few songs I like <laughs> I think it's just because like <laughs> it is a simple track but that beat bangs so hard it, that I'm like, you know what? I'm going to excuse you on this one. It does. It, <laughs> it, it, like, the beat is hard as fuck. It just, like, for me, like, a lot of the songs in that album just, like, there was a message to a lot of those songs, but they're just so, they were more simple than I'd like, especially from a guy like Lupe. Like, I expect, like, a lot of depth and, 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 and some thought and gravitas put towards it, especially because he's been in the game longer than... You know, most of these cats out here, so like he should at this point kind of be beyond that kind of stuff. And it was just, is um, it was disappointing. Is Droga's wave do or die? Is is this like the last stand? Uh, this is what's like gonna, this is what's gonna happen, right? This is this is my anticipation. Lupe is gonna release another album I don't like, but he's gonna have one song like Mural on there. <laughs> And I'm just going to be, like, continuously, like, you know, like how they say, like, for girls to watch out because the guy will give you, like, the, the best two weeks of your life. And then you'll constantly be living through that relationship, hoping those two, two weeks will come back. I feel right. like, <laughs> like with Mural and, like, with Enemy of the State, those were, like, those two weeks that, like, I keep getting. And then I'm like, oh, shit, okay, he's coming back. He's still got it in him. He's going to give us you know, the Lupe we've been waiting for. And I feel like that's going to happen again, where, like, Drogas Waves is going to, like, it's going to have one or two songs on there that, like, kind of blow me away. And then I'm going to be stuck waiting for the next, you know, Drogas Solid or whatever. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, I, and I feel like that's what's going to happen. I don't think Lupe's one of the few rappers that I'll probably never truly give up on. And maybe it's just because I am, like, you know, Lupe's one of those guys that I've been following for a while now. And, like, I am a fan, and, like, you know, I've, I've listened to enough of his work to know that, like, throughout the years, he hasn't quite lost it. He, he maybe can't put together an album anymore, but he hasn't quite lost his pen game yet. And so my hopes are still that we're going to get something someday. I don't know if it'll be another mixtape or if it'll be, you know, Drogas Waves or what, but I don't know, man. I'm I'm... I'm I'm hoping he's the one that I'm foolishly putting all my hope into. And yeah, he's um, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. He's for all intents and purposes, he got me wrapped around his finger. Like I'm so I'm so invested at this point that like I can't I can't let go. Like <laughs> why is that though? Because like if we really think about it, right? Like let's just if we don't go off the mixtapes and we go strictly off just the albums, or even if we dig off the mixtapes, if you you know you could say maybe Feral High Fair. The Feral Height had some tracks on it, um, and then for the, the people or whatever had a couple tracks on it. But like, I would argue that like his last great mixtape was Enemy of the State, which would be before Lasers, 
which would have been like in 2010 maybe yeah that was that was so it's like why is it that like out of all the rappers that are out there like we cut him the most slack like is he really that nice if it's been you know it's going to be close to 10 years before I we, think we get another he he he's one of those dudes that when he does hit it out the park it's like it's amazing mm -hmm. like he some people will they'll put out like a solid body of work and it's like all right this is cool but like i listen to the cool and i'm like yo this album is so like it's like Crazy. a drug yeah. almost so like when when he delivers like it's you can't help but like just over and over listen to because like yo, i gotta catch every bar uh -huh. i gotta dissect this i'm trying to like he he can do that to you uh -huh. and it's like it's just because those moments like that fix <laughs> the fix when it's good mm -hmm. it's so good that you excuse all of the bad times like you're willing to look past those two weeks yeah okay yeah like you're willing to look past like you know what i'm, I'm gonna give you a pat because i know when you do finally come through i'm gonna love it right so i'm a i'm gonna look past your wrongdoings for for however long it takes you to get your act together i'm gonna I'm stick it out for you it's 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 like a bad relationship, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess the way I'll put it is that like I'll, I'll, I won't have my hopes up, but I will definitely be a day one listener to most of the project he puts out, even moving forward. Um, and I'll definitely be following and, you know, like soaking up the the, the hype behind it, like to see like, all right, what's he gonna do? What's like I listened to could have could have been or whatever the song was called the other day and I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic hearing that um and so i'll play the game with lupe uh, connie is another one i'll do that with where it's like i don't know if we'll ever get a dark twisted fantasy or or a late registration college dropout kind of album again but i'll still like get on the hype train and and, and listen to them and you know be a day one listener and that kind of stuff i can't forgive him for Jesus. I, I completely did you hate it I, I i vividly remember that night mm -hmm. kanye is the only reason i ever listened to a mac miller album because i needed to listen to something else because i was so was that good am or was it uh or watching, um watching movies the watching that? movies with the yeah that one mm. so like i remember listening to Jesus and i like like the opening track i remember like this hearing this loud synth whatever mm -hmm. and i was like i don't know what what are you doing like don't get me. I, not, I love all genres of music, but this was not easy on the ears, and I was like, I can't get with this. But then it went to like black skinheads or something. I was like, all right, I can get with this. And then it went on this long stretch of songs I just hated. And then at the very end, he hits me with Bound Two, and I'm like, where was this? The whole, like that was what I was waiting for. But and you give it to me at the very end. The very end. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I hated that album. I, and then I was like, I got to listen to something else, and I found Mac Miller. Well, that album was dope to me, even though I don't, I never listened to anything he put out after that, because uh -huh. I'm not, like, a huge fan of his, but that was a good album. That's the one he had, he had Jay Electronics on that one, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think that one's pretty dope. Um, yeah, with Jesus, man, I didn't love it, but I actually didn't hate it. I think, like, the fact that it was only nine songs worked to benefit, <laughs> because, like, it was a pretty abrasive kind of album. But I think, like, the production more than anything is, like, what stood out for me. I think Kanye himself was just kind of, like, lyrically all over the place. And, you know, I mean, he's, he was on his Yeezus shit, which is cool to a certain extent. But a whole album's worth that. Is yeah. But. Yeah. Yeah, actually, now you think about it, had that album been, like, 14 tracks, I probably would have stopped. Right. I don't think I could have done one more. And I think, unfortunately, Man. that was kind of played by, like, uh, like hype and stuff like that, too. Because that was his follow-up to uh, Dark Twisted Fantasy. So, of course, like, you know, we were waiting for the next big Kanye Lush kind of whatever. And definitely didn't got get that. that. <laughs> definitely didn't get that. <laughs> we got a blank, a blank case and a blank... <laughs> <laughs> and a piece of tape on it. Right. <laughs> Extreme minimalism at its finest. <laughs> Man, yeah, I, I streamed it. I, 
that somebody had it on YouTube. I was like, yeah, I'm glad I did not pay for this. Cause, uh, yeah, that that would have been a quick return. <laughs> Soft. <laughs> Soft. Not even going up in the uh, the archive thing that you got. Nah, oh. sending that all the way back. <laughs> That's going back to the CD factory. Oh man. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I, I I couldn't. I was disappointment at its finest. <laughs> oh man, but all right, we're we're at about an hour twenty something minutes. Um. Uh, you gotta you gotta plug yourself. Uh, where, where can people find you on, on on the good old interwebs? Um, you guys can go to my SoundCloud Pale Moon. Um, I don't even know how I spelled it, but it's probably like P V. Like P V. It might be P V L E M O N, and there's an underscore somewhere in there. I don't know, man. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm I'll leave a link. I'm, I'm weird about social media like that. I'm not like I'm kind of active, but I'm also not active in certain ways. So. Whatever, just look look around for me, guys. I'm sure I'll probably jump on another one of these uh, uh, dojo podcasts at some point. There'll be something else that I feel compelled to. Come yeah, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna grab you for uh, for Wonder Woman. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm I, probably gonna grab you for Wonder Woman, I, and because that's gonna transition to a lot of DC talk. I very purposely not watched any of those trailers. Me neither. Because I just I already know I already know what's going on with DC right now. I don't want to fucking get caught up in any kind of hype i just want to watch it and have a blank slate and see and hopefully it'll be good hopefully it'll be good and yeah i'll definitely be hyped to come on and and either bitch yeah. about it or gush about it or i'm i'm already going out there and i've been telling co-workers i'm so hyped for this movie so like i'm already emotionally invested so if i which i don't know if that's probably a bad thing yeah <laughs> but, I, like <laughs> and, uh, we know how that worked out. So. But yeah, when when that movie comes out, yeah, y'all are definitely gonna hear from me because I'm 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 emotionally invested in this movie. But yeah, I'm I'm definitely gonna grab you uh grab you for that. So that's what June third, six. It's like first week of June, okay. something like that. We'll be on for that. So guys. we'll be on. Yeah, and I'm and I'm going day one. Like like this is not a game for me. I'm going day one. I never go day one. I'm going day one for this. I don't care about parking. What? I don't care about who I got to fight to get in the line. Can I ask why? Like, I mean, I know we're kind of, this is running kind of long, I, but why? I saw that, that first, I don't know, that, the first initial trailer I think they showed at Comic-Con, mm -hmm. like last year, I don't know, man, it did something to me. You know what I think it is, though? Not that the trailer was bad, because I thought the trailer was awesome, but, like, I think I have this vision of what I think it's going to be in my head. And, like, I'm hoping that what I'm envisioning is what I'm going to get on the screen. Mm. Even though mm. I know... It... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say I know I might be setting myself up to get hurt. I know I could be. But, like, just in my head, I'm envisioning, like, okay, DC's getting into the live-action game. You know, they kind of stumbled out the gate. But, like, I feel like this this should be or could be the home run. Like, this might be what... Because a lot of people, you know, I, not to go too deep on another tangent, I know a lot of people felt a certain way about Batman versus Superman. I thought it was decent, minus that whole corny Martha thing, mm -hmm. which is another discussion for another day. But, like, I thought it was okay. Like, I, 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 I enjoyed it, minus a few flaws that I had with it. I never saw Suicide Squad, but I didn't hear much good about it. Oh, so, I'm going to take people's word that it wasn't, I, I, you know. I can't believe Suicide Squad exists. <laughs> I can't believe like uh, so like I'm pretty much in the same boat about with you when it comes to uh, Batman vs Superman I've purposely have only ever watched it twice because I after the second time I started to feel myself waver and I was like you know what let me just leave while, while I still kind of like it and never watch it again and that way I'll only have a kind of decent memory of it but Suicide Squad man like the editing in it was just like horrendous like it, like I don't know like maybe your listeners maybe they do or they don't they don't know like like the rules behind editing but the main rule of editing is that you're not supposed to notice it. it's just supposed to be something it's a function in movies that's critical to a movie playing out well in terms of pacing and stuff like that but you're not actually supposed to notice edits and like this whole movie I was just like yo like why are they cutting like that why are they going back to this like what's up with like wow it, it, it Suicide Squad was bad, and I was completely and thoroughly shocked at how bad it was. Because I thought it was, <laughs> I thought it was going to be 
it, it was like Wonder Woman for me, like how it is for you. I I was championing it. I thought it was going to be what saves the DC universe, and I guess it's all in, in uh, Gal Gadot's hands now. It is, and that and uh, and I've said it to other people that if if this is bad, I don't know if I'm going to see Justice League. Yeah. And I want to see Justice League so bad, but if they fumble this one, this might be, this might be the last stand. And I, I always stick up for DC. I, I feel like they do get a lot of unnecessary, you know, Heat. flack. But yeah, at this point, if you mess up Wonder Woman, I don't know if I can defend you anymore. What, like, what do they do if like, uh, okay, let's say let's just say Wonder Woman is like okay, decent, and then Justice League is like decent to bad or something like that right because that's Zack Snyder on that one like do they just stop making the movies for like five years or like I think it goes by the numbers because you can say what you want about Batman versus Superman the numbers show otherwise yeah people want to see it so as long as people are if, if they can keep getting people intrigued enough to spend their money to see it then you just keep making them yeah. and you just <laughs> just get your money but yeah, if 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 Wonder Woman bombs for whatever reason, or if Justice League bombs, yeah, you might want to rethink your whole. Because at this point, they already got like a whole schedule well, set out of Aquaman, what's supposed. Aquaman's already yeah. Being filmed, so it's like it's not like you they're can, in too deep. You, you can't just like stop at Justice League. You have to, right. You at the very least put out Aquaman, I would guess, and I think the Flash and Cyborg are under some type of production right now. So like those movies, I don't know if they've started filming yet, but like. You know, once those wheels start turning, I don't know like how quickly you can stop them from turning. And... They might be all in. It it might just be they're just gonna have to stick it out, and they're either gonna be the biggest. It'll end. be a solid showing or something great, or they'll just be the laughing stock. The and... biggest L of all time. Decent right. Be <laughs> and because I think Cyborg is due 2020, so if they fail up until then, then we just won't see DC anymore after 2020. <laughs> like it just won't. They'll do animated movies because their animated movies are always for the most part pretty good but live action that might just not be their that might not be their thing that might take that some, might just yeah it's take, it's take some time off go reflect right take time off get a new coach right, get <laughs> like, Affleck, like, he sad. right. <laughs> yeah that will we'll see though but um thanks for joining me man we went an hour 30 that's actually not too bad I've, we rambled for well over two hours before so hour 30 on this podcast is actually not Oh, yeah, man. Not thanks too for, bad timing. Thanks for having me in the dojo, and I uh, can't wait to come back. No problem. We'll be be back soon. Um, trying to step my social media game up, so like the Facebook page. There'll be links, SoundCloud, YouTube. I'm now on Twitter to be harassed and all that good stuff. <laughs> at Serial Sensei. So, um, yeah. So we'll be back soon, hopefully with another episode. I got some other albums up the, up the sleeve I've been kind of dabbling in so i might have another episode next week we'll see um but yeah thank you guys for listening and until next time we will catch y'all later peace